Okay, and we are being recorded. Hello, today is uh, regular Jenkins configuration as code meeting. Today is February 26. Uh, so we are sometime past after FOSDEM and after other things, and we are getting back to our regular schedule. So today we have only three people on the call, me, Tim, Jacob, and Antonia. And yeah, I'll share my screen uh, to show the agenda. Mm, yeah, I think we just run a common agenda today. We start from news and then we will discuss ongoing development. And if uh, there are other topics, we will uh, discuss uh, them uh, after that. Uh, so let's uh, just continue. Uh, regarding news, uh, the main news uh, we have these uh, weeks is that uh, system read permission. It's a long project by team. Project has team been has fine. Sorry? Oh, yep. So um, this change has been finally landed in the uh, Jenkins Weekly. Mm, and you can see that uh, there is not only this change, there are other changes uh, for overall managed permissions. Uh, there was a lot of collaboration to get uh, this uh, pull requests aligned. And it's great to see that both of them are landed. You may see that both of them are in experimental state. So there might be some changes in APIs and in the behaviors, but the core functionality there. And now there is a lot of work to actually get it uh, integrated into Jenkins ecosystem, including plugin patches, etc. And this uh, is uh, our next steps there. Tim, would you like to add something about the read permission? Uh, no, other than that there's a extended read permission plugin 3.1 that you can install to activate it without having to mess around with system properties. Um, so just installing the latest version of the plugin will activate it for you. Um, and there's pull requests in flight for quite a lot of the additional functionality um, needed for this. Um, but the core functionality is integrated. All right. Um, and another advantage of this plugin is that it provides API, which can be used if you want to adopt system read permission checks, but do not want to bump Jenkins core dependency. So there is a, a convenience API which allows to do some bits, and uh, I guess we are going to use it in JCast plugin and other related plugins. I don't think we'll need it in JCast plugin because we're bumping it. We're currently bumping it for the milestones. Oh, okay. Yeah, but role mm -hmm. strategy plugin has it has it added. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of bumps, uh, there is ongoing discussion about LTS baseline selection. Because uh, yeah, two dot uh, two 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 is just uh, probably the last release we consider for LCS baseline. The final decision uh, should be made uh, tonight, um, and uh, there is ongoing discussion in the developer mailing list about which baseline uh, will be selected. And I guess uh, the current state uh, that it would be the, this release with all these changes I would like yeah. to get or the previous release, which is stable, uh, but uh, which doesn't include the CPI changes. So right now uh, there is a thread with a bunch of comments. And if you have a, an opinion, uh, please comment. If you have tested um, um, a version or if you would be interested to get these features, also please comment so that uh, it can influence the decision. Because probably comment. We've been running it in production since for a couple of days. Yeah, I installed uh, uh, this version. Uh, this version. Uh, sorry, uh, I installed uh, this version on uh, Monday um, on my setup. It works well, and the system read permission also works well. And uh, right now, I hope that uh, not to update my demo so that we can uh, evaluate it uh, on the demo site as well. Okay. Anything else about uh, system read permissions? Uh, I, I guess the only thing is I'm not sure what, what, what it is and what it means for JCASC. Um, so the main goal for the system read permission is um, so that you can have a Jenkins that's completely managed as code, but you can still discover the configuration um, that's in, in terms of JCASC and also to allow users to contribute to it easy, easier. So your users can still see what plugins you have installed and what your JKS export will be, um, but they can't directly change it. They have to change it in the code. Um, so the JKS side of that will, come, will be coming very soon. Um, mm -hmm. We'll progress 
for that in the next couple of days. Um, uh, that's a short introduction to it. Yeah, maybe it makes sense to have a demo at the next meeting because we still need to, to integrate a bunch of pull requests um, weekly, etc., to provide um, full user experience for uh, permission users. I guess so. Right now, it doesn't do much without. Uh, it has the manage page, which is the major part of it, um, but there's yeah. plenty of other pages that are missing. So yeah, there is a number of pull requests here submitted by team, uh, just or just particular uh, components. And I guess we will be using the same approach for manage permissions because manage permissions also just uh, just with the foundation pull request landed. So yeah, there will be a lot of uh, these pull requests. Let's make sure that all of them get integrated quickly so that by the next LCS baseline, we can say that this feature is in GA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we could uh, just do a demo maybe today or maybe um, uh, at the next meeting, depending on of, uh, what you prefer. Yeah, I could probably do a demo today, just merge them all into one branch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I should yeah. be able to. Let's see. Um, okay, and uh, regarding the rest, um, so um, community bridge project, um, we had a project uh, which was devoted to JCASC uh, uh, YAML validation and to um, Visual Studio Code plugin, which would uh, allow uh, editing JCASC files. And we are happy to announce that this project is officially over. Um, so uh, there is a final blog post by Sladin Nunes, uh, who was uh, our mentee working on this project. Um, uh, this blog post summarizes how to use um, uh, the JCASC plugin for Visual Studio Code and how to get uh, YAML configurations uh, from JCASC. So um, you can refer to this blog post and, or just install uh, the plugin for Visual Studio Code, which is also available on the marketplace. So you can do it quickly as you probably do for other Visual Studio Code plugins. And it has already got quite a number of installations. Okay, if you want to know more about uh, this project, then there will be online meetup today. So it's 2 p.m. UTC. And yeah, basically it will be a demo uh, by Sladia. So team, uh, maybe you could summarize what would be there uh, because they, you've been at the dry run. Uh, yep. So today, um, Sladen will be demoing um, the project, um, what the project goal, what it, what was completed, um, and then he'll go through installing the plugin, um, exporting the schema from a well, conf so installing the plugin, configuring the plugin, um, exporting the configuration from your running Jenkins, and then developing configuration as code. Um, well, not develop so, conf so writing configuration as code configuration um, inside VS Code with with IntelliSense assistance. Yeah, there are some screenshots. I'm not sure if they are big enough. Oh, okay, now they're definitely too big. Basically, once you configure that, you can uh, edit uh, the configuration. You can get some advisors uh, right in the uh, ID. So, yeah, it's great. So, looking forward uh, to have this meetup and the presentation. And if you're interested in uh, GCASC validation, uh, make sure that you join the meetup or watch the recording. Okay, that's all uh, we have uh, regarding news. And we have some uh, items for ongoing development. So the main one is support of milestones. Um, several uh, weeks ago, we integrated uh, the foundation pull requests into the Jenkins core. So yeah, it will definitely be in the next LCS baseline. LCS baseline. Mm, we just need to understand uh, what would be the next with this pull request. So Francisca has created a pull request which adopts the change. Uh, yeah, here's a bunch of changes here. <clears throat> so if I understand correctly, it needs uh, reviews from uh, potential stakeholders. 
Uh, but uh, that's it. I think it's um, pretty much ready to go. The reason it hasn't been merged was there was a <coughs> test leaking on Java 11 only. Mm -hmm. um, we and we couldn't reproduce it locally. We made a couple of changes. We upgraded the mm -hmm. Java version running on CI Jenkins IO. Um, after that, it started passing every now and then before it was failing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and we also changed the Surefire to rerun failing tests four times um, as passing 100% mm -hmm. after that. Um, Francisco ran it 20 times locally and was never able to make it fail locally. Um, mm -hmm. Are we sure we want to enable that rerun property? Because that, that's, um, that's usually hiding flaky tests and that, that's yeah. not a good thing, in my opinion. We, we should try to avoid that, if possible. Yeah, I agree. So for us, uh, the problem is uh, the complexity. So here you can see that uh, the test um, it, it, it applies job dependencies and other things. So it tries to reproduce um, the race condition event. Hmm. Possibly we can just have that test rerun itself. Does that seem to be the only flaky one? It was strange that it only happened on Java 11, but I'm not sure why. Yeah, so it will uh, include some retries here with some uh, delay. Uh, but yeah, we can uh, rerun this test. Yeah, there, there should be a way just to have this test reran, not mm -hmm. all of them. Yeah. One of my concerns about uh, this change, well, probably better later than never, is about alignment with groovy hooks. Because my understanding is that in the current state, um, it, uh, after the change, it would be competing with groovy hooks. Uh, I don't think so. The groovy hooks weren't changed in the in the milestones PR to core. Mm, yeah, uh, they were not changed. Mm. And the, um, yeah, I'm actually responsible for that uh, because uh, groovy hooks uh, may be managing jobs. So my concern was that uh, changing. Uh, uh, the initialization uh, order might be a problem. Just a second, uh, I'll find it. Mm. I can just open the pull request. So let's take a look at what we integrated in the last change. It may not show up because he would have reverted the change. Yeah. So, it was basically my advice. Uh, just a second. Yeah, this one. So, yeah, now it happens after job loaded. So it might be a problem. Um, I think that we, we definitely need to look at what we do before we merge. But I think that uh, we could just uh, apply it as a separate pull request and maybe even uh, backport it to LCS if needed. Yeah. Just one thing. So I didn't think about that uh, when I was commenting, because yeah, for me, groovy hooks uh, would be uh, much more important uh, than uh, job management in uh, groovy hooks. Uh, but yeah. Uh, 
So So I think that uh, the easiest way would would be to just um, <clears throat> fix um, the Jenkins core and uh, to apply original uh, implementation by Francisco and maybe introduce a new uh, initialization milestone for Groovy hooks so that whomever manages jobs can move them. Um, but yeah, it might be a problem. We could possibly just document it um, in here. I think a lot of the use of Groovy hooks has declined since JKS has got a lot more st stable and popular. There's still, still uses for it, but it's a lot less popular than what it used to be. Yeah, it's uh, less popular. The problem that uh, many people use uh, these tools in combination, each use each other, including my <laughs> setups. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, you can just uh, leave it to me because yeah, I, I suggested to reverse the change and now I should follow up. Okay. Okay. So system read uh, permission follow-ups. I guess we discussed everything. Uh, yeah, there's, if there's any more ideas, there's an epic on Jira for it. Um, mm -hmm. It's got five, it's got five or six stories or issues currently um mm -hmm. but uh, they will be a lot of um, other minor things so for example yeah. i discovered that some buttons uh, still appear when uh, they shouldn't for example in uh, descriptor drop downs so thanks a lot uh, for converting this uh, this task to epic so we can just uh, dump more tasks here i guess yeah i think you need to log in for them to show up for some uh, reason yeah, I still don't understand why yeah, Apex are configured in that way in Jira. You or have you have to log in on your phone to see anything. Okay. Yeah, by the way, somebody put uh, this uh, ticket to negative community ratings. Do the reason I cannot explain. Mm. Actually, there might be one reason, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll also make sure, make sure uh, to create a few extra to uh, topics here. Cool, that would be good. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it will be a long project to get everything fixed because we have UI controls uh, implementing the plugins. Hmm. And we also have some UI controls which are currently implemented in JavaScript, which is going to be an additional challenge. Uh, but yeah, I it's not too hard to adopt them, but it just makes it harder. Well, it will take a while, but uh, the feature is experimental for a reason. So we have some time to get it adopted. And anyway, it provides a better interface uh, than it used to provide before. Because before that, the only way was to just either disable admin completely or be on the hook uh, for collisions. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, so we have a uh, bill of materials update. Mm, I guess it will be also a lengthy change. Uh, yeah, well, it's been going on for quite a while, but we're stuck on CloudBees folder at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so CloudBees folder is depending on a new version of Strux, but it's not getting picked up in the, um, in the bomb build and we have no idea why. Is it in PCT? Yeah, it's PCT. Uh, yeah, so there was uh, one patch from JC about... Uh, yeah, that was another issue. So that, so that was an issue causing flakiness. So some, there was some connection timeouts causing some builds to fail. All right. So our update center wasn't really stable over the past weeks, 
and one of these and between us is unstable PC2 would also yeah. yeah yeah that was picked up in one of the bomb builds that mm -hmm. but it's not what's causing cloudbeast folder <laughs> to fail I haven't uh, looked at that uh, yet. I could try to take a look because, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, PCT is quite complicated nowadays. I've I've downloaded, I've built the Mega War, I've unzipped the plugins. I, I can't even find that version of Strux. I've gripped for dependencies. I mean, it's a it's a bund The problem is, it's the the bundled version is being picked up, and not mm -hmm. the required version. So Jesse currently packages a mega award here, right? Yeah. Uh, probably he shouldn't, but yeah. So uh, mega award is uh, one of the first implementations for PCT, PCT, which we are using for other purposes, but it's a bit complicated now. So I can take a look what happens because uh, we already had some issues with shady plugins before mostly coming from test dependencies and from other definitions. Uh, but are we able to reproduce it? Uh, I can't reproduce. Uh, can I reproduce? Mm -hmm. mm, I think I can reproduce it locally, I think. Um, I yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was able to reproduce it locally, but it's been a while since I mm -hmm. tried. Um, the other thing is that the plugin has um, on master they've changed to using the bomb, but it doesn't look like it would have any effect. Um, they, I don't think, don't think it's been released. Mm -hmm. Do you need to release it there? Um, I think I pinged on the pull request whether they could release it just just in case it helps. Mm -hmm. Well, it's worth trying. <laughs> yeah, I also don't think that it's going to change anything. It's called no, it didn't, it didn't look like it. Looking at the effect of POM, it didn't look like it changed. Uh, um, I think it was, I think it might be, it's workflow, might be workflow step API causing the CloudBees folder to fail. I think, um, possibly. Um, maybe. So I can take a look. Uh, you need this pull request, right? Yeah, yeah, it would be great. I've been working on it for quite some time. Uh, just that PR can be closed now. Um, that that test one. This one can be closed. Yeah. This one and which should be. So the test on two ninety dot one. So it, it reproduced the error and um, it was fixed in the next version of the LTS. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what helped me find um, where the issue was. No, oh, you already commented that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I can uh, pink uh, Fran and Baptiste about the release if needed. Okay, so anything else about bomb? Oh. Can you hear me? My microphone's going strange. You, you um, seem to be muted. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's a bomb 2.90 line as well, which is having similar weird PCT issues. So if you do have time, it would be um, okay. great to look at so we can get the additional lines out, especially since a new LTS is coming. Um, we, we had massive Trilliad API problems, um, but most of them have been fixed now. Um, let me add it. Um, where's bomb? So Antonio, do you hear him? Yeah, I, I hear him. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so it's like you don't hear Tim, only that. That, that there is a broken connection there. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's see what uh, gets recorded to the cloud. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so can we move on here? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So regarding um, uh, the GCASC demo, I started to work in uh, this old demo I have uh, had for configuration is called on Groovy Hooks. So they will be reference implementation for system read permissions and other things. So I will get it. Still doesn't work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, now I don't hear you neither. <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what happens. So yeah, we'll just get uh, this demo updated and uh, hopefully it will uh, be a reference implementation uh, to whomever wants to implement that. And also team uh, works on uh, CI Jenkins to work towards the JCASC. So team, I'm not sure whether we can uh, go through this topic now, uh, but yeah, maybe we could put it uh, for the next meeting. Oh. No. Nope. <laughs> okay, that's right. Does that make a difference? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm on my headset mic now. Um, mm -hmm. For CIO, that's um, working and I can schedule jobs using the Kubernetes plugin. Um, I haven't added the Azure VM agent. Um, it's currently on a, I never opened it in public because um, um, Olivia never confirmed that he was happy um, for the credential IDs and such to be shared. That was kind of asked in the description, just check, check whether you're happy for this to be opened in public. And then he went crazy just reviewing it all. Um, yeah, taking our recent advisories, I can understand Olivier why he's not exactly happy because we had so many plugins announced for permission travels and password travels. So he risks. Oh, he didn't say he wasn't happy. He just reviewed the pull request and <laughs> it's just not really what I asked for, but, um, Mm -hmm. So it's working. I didn't add the Azure agent configuration because he asked me to hold off because it was quite likely that it's moving to AWS. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of just waiting, um, just just waiting just for the AWS sponsorship at the moment, um, and possibly moving the infra folder to a different, or at least some of the infra folder to another. Um, Jenkins, so that, that it doesn't have to have any infrastructure credentials that matter on there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't put the infra credentials in as a folder. It's not very easy in JCAST, but problem is if it's not, then anyone can get access to the infra credentials, um, which isn't good. Um, mm -hmm. What's, what's just out, out of curiosity, what's going to be used for credentials there? Because we have credentials IDs in, in the YAML, but the actual credential is not using what? Uh, do you mean how the credentials are populated or? Yes. Uh, so the credentials are coming from um, SOPS, which is a, a tool for encrypting um, the credentials and they're stored in a private Git repository. Okay. So a similar approach to what I was used in Evergreen, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we use it for all of the services that are deployed on Kubernetes, so all Jenkins IO and Uplink and LDAP server and everything. Mm -hmm. So the real problem is credential IDs, right? I mean, I can easily move credentials IDs to SOPs as well. It's not a problem. I was just asking if it was a problem. Uh, so the problem that we need to reference some credential IDs in pipeline. Yeah, exactly. 
because yeah, if you just needed to uh, obfuscate them in configuration files, it's uh, trivial. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, then I'm not sure which magic you would need to uh, protect the credential IDs in pipeline. So I'm not sure if it's worth protecting them or not, but I just asked the question. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Anyway, uh, it's great to have uh, some progress there. I wanted to migrate it to JCask for years, but <laughs> yeah. Looks so like, yeah, but for, uh, it, it works, um, and mm -hmm. people seem, Olivia seemed quite interested. I haven't really been able to join the Infra meetings recently properly to talk about it. I'm traveling when the Infra meeting is on, so I, I joined, but my connection's quite bad. Yeah, but yeah, for us, having configuration as code is the first step to have uh, a kind of CI CD for the instance and also to enable external contributions because right now yeah. there is only a limited set of people who can uh, go to the web interface and uh, to configure the Jenkins setup, which is definitely yeah, and not a reference implementation which we would like to promote. Yeah, and it's always been very hard to find out what plugins are installed and, and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, so the new instances like uh, Jenkins release environment, uh, they designed uh, differently, but say Jenkins IO, you still need to update it. Yeah. Yeah. So possibly if it's moved to AWS, it'd be a good time to do it then. Yeah, I agree. Okay, uh, do we have any other topics for today? So plugin compatibility highlights and pending fixes. Uh, there's a pending fix for the file credentials. Um, um, that's pending merge in the plain credentials plugin, I think it is. Matt, Matt's approved it, but he hasn't merged it. Mm. Uh, maybe not apply try try credentials plugin. Mm, so file credentials. I thought it's a separate plugin. Uh, pull request. Yeah, it's, uh, yes, this one. Return object and convert it if it's secret rights. Yeah. Okay. Just it. I think we missed it. There was a, a, a fix in JCAS was required as well to make this work. Um, mm -hmm. But it's got an integration test that depends on this fix being released. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, pretty much similar uh, to what we do for secrets in the Jenkins core. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think just post it. Yeah, CAS tried doing a similar fix, but it didn't quite fully work a couple of months ago, but this seems to work fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So such uh, minor things here and there could improve the stability. But yeah, well, so ci.jenkins.io has this problem where the exported configuration had no credentials on it um, because mm -hmm. of this bug. So that, that was annoying and motivated me to finally fix it. Yeah, export from externality hurts. But yeah, we did a great progress over the past year. Now the export configuration can be actually used, which is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other hot topics before we close down? So one maybe unrelated topic is Google Summary of Code. So we have a bunch of projects there, but right now we do not have uh, a project which would specifically focus on uh, JCASC. So if anyone is interested, we could add something. Uh, but yeah, historically we tried to run a JCASC project two times and every time it was quite complicated. But uh, if you take particular feature, for example, extra external configuration sources or something like that, uh, it might fly. I'm not sure. Yeah, that would possibly work. But mm -hmm. yeah, I've always struggled with it because it's not really a beginner project. Um, yeah, well, for me, many projects we completed over past years were not really beginner ones. So mm. it's a matter of finding a student 
who would be capable of doing uh, such kind of projects. But yeah. So yeah, I've already yeah. yeah, I've already got my name against a couple of other projects to mentor, so probably won't mm -hmm. put my hand up. Um, but it can be could be a potential could be a co-mentor possibly, but yeah. So actually, I was wrong. Uh, there is one project which is definitely related to JCask, it's plugin mm. installation manager tool. Um, I need to fix that, I guess, for somebody. Uh, yep. But um, yeah, uh, this would actually help JCask because we still need to integrate plugin manager into the Docker image and maybe even into the Jenkins core. Uh, who knows? But this is a project which would help the ecosystem. You're going to struggle to get YAML into the Jenkins core. Yeah, I can imagine uh, what security team says about that. <laughs> Daniel wasn't keen at posting. <clears throat> yeah, uh, but well, technically, if someone already wants to do that, there is custom work packages which can inject. Uh, mm. uh, um, custom configuration yeah, of the plugin manager uh, and uh, taking uh, the project by Rick about uh, uh, packaging service, uh, which is basically a uh, custom work packager as a service. Maybe it would be one of the ways to get it injected. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, let's see where it goes, but yeah, I hope that uh, there will be uh, some projects around uh, JCASC this year. Yep, that would okay. be great. So, yeah, that's it from me. Anything else? Mm -hmm. And yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Antonio. Thanks a lot, team. Yeah. Thanks to you. Let's try to get uh, all these pull requests so like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Thanks all. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks.